Are you dreading an upcoming long haul flight? I'll be honest, the prospect of spending seven, 10 or 12 plus hours in a tiny seat in a metal tube flying 30,000 feet in the sky can be daunting, but it doesn't have to be that way. Hey guys, Nick here from Away Together. And in this video, I'm going to quickly break down several tips that will help you survive a long flight. I'm gonna cover things like what to wear, some key essential items that you'll wanna bring with you, ways to pass the time, and even break down some strategies on where to sit and how to get quality sleep. Let's get started with what to wear. Okay, in terms of what to wear, comfort is key. You're gonna be sitting for hours on end and possibly in kind of a cramped seat. So the last thing you want is for your clothing to add to your discomfort. I usually recommend wearing layers because the temperature on planes can be unpredictable. So dressing in layers gives you a little bit more control. If you get hot, you could shed a layer. If you get cold, you can add one. If you're traveling carry-on only, you'll want what you wear on the plane to work with your overall packing strategy. And typically, what I recommend to carry-on only packers is to wear their bulkier items on the plane with them to save space in their bag. So that's things like jeans, boots, a jacket, etc. However, for a really long flight, it can be super uncomfortable to have to sit there for 10, 12 hours in something like a pair of jeans. So let me give you an example. Here's a clip of my wife, Allie, and I before boarding a long flight from Frankfurt, Germany to Phuket, Thailand. I wanna walk through this clip and show you exactly what we're wearing. So my wife, Allie, is wearing some comfy leggings by Lululemon, a basic t-shirt by Madewell, and her favorite jean jacket. I'm wearing a basic pair of Nike joggers and a merino wool t-shirt, which merino wool is great because it can help regulate temperature. Now, if you don't really like wearing, you know, leggings or joggers or sweatpants or something like that in public, which I understand, you could always have them in your personal item bag with you and then just change into them on the plane before you try to get some shut eye. And then also be sure to have a nice comfy jacket or hoodie with you so you can keep warm during the flight. One other item I recommend wearing for long haul flights is compression socks. In the clip that we just looked at, I'm wearing them. You can't really see, uh, you can kind of see right here, but compression socks are great because they help regulate your circulation, which can be really important on these long flights. Okay, let's get into some long haul flight essentials that you're gonna want to bring with you on your flight. Before I get into the list of items that you wanna bring, it's important to have a bag that's going to give you access to these essential items. And I wanna give you a few different ideas. If you're a one bag traveler carrying a backpack, consider something like this Porter 46 from Osprey. It's got this great quick access pocket up at the top for things like your passport and several of the other items that I'm about to mention. Or if you checked your bag or you're carrying on a small roller bag, I'm a big fan of the Peak Design 20 liter backpack. It's super sturdy and has a lot of great storage space. Another smaller idea is something like the Tripped Travel Gear Tech Pouch. I've given a more full review of that. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it below. Or you could go with some type of small sling or fanny pack like Allie has on here. Okay, in terms of some essentials to bring with you, let's get started with toiletry type items. Essential number one is a toothbrush and toothpaste. Probably no explanation required. I assume you're bringing it with you anyways, but you may not have thought to keep it accessible. These travel days can be really long sometimes, so being able to brush your teeth is a great way to feel like you can kind of freshen up. And Allie really likes this toothbrush because it comes with a handy case. This next essential was a game changer when we first discovered it. One time Allie bought these Degree body wipes and they've become kind of a go-to for us ever since. It can be really nice on a long travel day to be able to go into the plane lavatory before it lands and use one of these wipes to kind of wipe down your face and just wipe down your body a little bit. It can really help you feel like you've freshened up even if you didn't get to take a shower. Airplanes are controlled environments that are typically kept at very low humidity, much lower than humidity here on the ground. So you'll wanna bring things like lotion, facial moisturizer, and chapstick. Just make sure it's under the 3.4 ounce liquid requirement set by the TSA. Because planes are so dry, you're also going to become dehydrated faster. So as we transition into a couple of comments about food and drink, I'm gonna make some recommendations about water. First off, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're properly hydrated before your flight. Now don't overhydrate because that can actually have a reverse effect. Next, 
make sure you bring a great refillable water bottle. I've linked my favorite below. Once you go through airport security, you can then fill that water up typically with various water fountains or stations throughout the airport. And I know they're expensive, but we also tend to buy at least one big bottle of water in the airport, and that'll be our one major airport expense. That way on the plane, if the flight attendant won't fill up your refillable water bottle, you've at least got some reserves and don't have to keep getting refills one tiny cup at a time. In terms of what else to eat or drink on your flight, a couple more tips. Remember, alcohol can dehydrate you, so even if it's free, there is a cost to consider, so to speak. And I know plain food is polarizing, but I always eat it because I'm a pig and I like free things. But if it grosses you out, or let's say you have dietary restrictions or food allergies, you may want to bring some snacks just in case. Okay, let's talk about how to spend your time. For a long flight, you're definitely going to want to bring something to keep yourself occupied. Most international flights these days have plane seats with personal screens that have large libraries of content. But in the instance that the plane doesn't have it, or if let's say your screen is broken or something, I always recommend downloading some shows or movies from Netflix or whatever streaming service to your phone or tablet or whatever. To see what your flight is going to have, you can look on your airline's app or use a free site that I'm about to tell you about. You could also bring a book or a Kindle or to save space, download the Kindle app on your phone. Another consideration is how you're gonna keep your device charged, especially if you're consuming content on it while the flight is happening. A lot of planes these days have standard outlets or USB slots, so at a minimum, make sure you've got your phone charger or cable with you, but I also recommend bringing some kind of power bank just in case. Another recommendation for how to spend your time is to move around. If you remember, I mentioned circulation earlier when I was talking about compression socks, it's important to move around every couple of hours or so when you're flying to reduce the risk of blood clots. Don't be that person that's like pacing up and down the aisle or hovering over someone else's seat. Don't, don't be that guy. But a way that I manage this is like every time I get up to use the restroom, I will stand for a bit, maybe move around and kind of try to loosen up. This is just gonna help prevent blood clots, help promote circulation and keep you from getting stiff. Okay, next up is some thoughts on where to sit. Picking a great seat can make a huge difference in your comfort level on a long flight. Now, personally, I love the aisle seat. If you're on a long haul flight in economy, especially one of those ones that has a middle section, it can be really nice to be on one of the aisles in the middle section for two reasons. The first is it gives you quick access to get out of your row. That's true of any aisle seat. But the second is it gives other people in your row a different way out of the row than just where you're sitting. Let's say you're asleep and someone else in your row has to go to the bathroom. There's a good chance that they could go the other way and not have to wake you up. One of my favorite seating scenarios is when my wife and I can have a row of three to ourselves and leave the middle seat empty between us. That's what's going on here in this clip and that's actually from that same flight from Frankfurt to Phuket. What had happened was we were supposed to be seated a few rows ahead and then once the boarding door had closed and we noticed that no one was in that row we asked if we could move back there the flight attendant was cool with it and we had a much more comfortable seating arrangement for that flight now this isn't always going to work for you but what i will say is don't be that person that like goes and sits there while people are still getting on the plane don't do that go sit in your assigned place the time to do it is once the boarding door has closed see what's available and ask. The worst someone can say is no. If that feels risky to you and you don't wanna take chances on kind of the luck of the draw, which is very much what we did, I highly recommend checking out the free website Seat Guru, which will help you figure out in advance which seat to purchase. Seat Guru allows you to look up your specific plane and it'll help you find the best and worst seats as well as in-flight amenities and user submitted reviews. Of course, one of the best ways to get amazing comfort on a long haul flight is to fly business or first class with a lie flat seat. We've had the blessing of flying business class on a couple of international flights now, and it's definitely worth it if you can make it happen. For example, when we flew business class on a 12 hour flight from Singapore to Istanbul, where as you can see, my feet barely even reached the footrest because we had so much legroom. 
or an incredible American Airlines flagship business flight from Rome to Chicago, where I got seconds and even thirds on dessert, which was a Sunday bar. Now, I don't say any of this to brag. It made our flight very, very comfortable. But for me, the best part is those flights were both essentially free because we booked them using points that we earned through credit card welcome bonuses. If you wanna learn more about that, I've linked to my favorite card that helped me pull off that flight from Singapore to Istanbul. And I've also got a list of my favorite credit cards for earning travel rewards that I review and update monthly. You can see that link below as well. Okay, let's talk about sleep because getting quality sleep on a long flight can be kind of tough. But if it's an overnight flight or you just want to try to get some sleep, there are a few things that you can do. The first thing I recommend is bringing an eye mask to block out any light. You may not be the kind of person that normally sleeps with an eye mask, but on a plane, there's all kinds of light and this is just gonna help you if you wanna get some shut eye. The next thing is, and I probably should have recommended this earlier, is to bring some noise canceling headphones. This is gonna help block out any sounds that may be going on. Okay, another thing I like to do, and this is not medical advice, but consider if you wanna bring some kind of non-habit forming sleep aid like melatonin. This can just help your body adjust to whatever time you're trying to get on, and it can help you get a few quality hours of sleep. Okay, if you're wondering if you should buy or bring one of those travel neck pillow things, this could be controversial, but my vote is no. It is comfortable on the plane, but you've gotta lug that thing around with you for your whole trip. I usually just skip it. They typically, and I'm not gonna say always, so don't get mad at me, but they typically will hand out a pillow, or if you ask for one, they'll give you a little plane pillow and a blanket on the plane. Another big consideration when it comes to sleep and long haul flights is how to deal with jet lag. In this video, I break down my exact strategies for how to overcome jet lag so I can hit the ground running when I arrive at my destination. Thanks so much for watching. If you got value out of today's video, please hit that thumbs up button. It actually helps. And let me know in the comments below if you've got a long haul flight essential or tip. Happy travels.